Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's been a great week, don't you agree? Amen. Uh, we are here in the midst of Revelation. It's been a pretty rough road up up to this point. Well, I would uh, I would tell you that it's not going to get any lighter. The burden on the sinful man is not going to get any any lighter. If you brought your copy of the Word of God this morning. I invite you to open to chapter 6. We're going to be looking at verses 9 through 17 this morning. Chapter 6, verses 9 through 17. Now, last week we saw the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this brings us to about the midpoint, somewhere around about, of tribulation. And from here on, we're going to see things that are only explainable by God. Now, man in his uh, fallen state has tried to explain it away up to this point of plays and different things but now we're going to see undeniable absolutely undeniable unrefutable proof of God of course you know the natural man is going to deny him every time he can and it's not really going to change but it will be undeniable in this section of scripture so again chapter 6 verses 9 through 17 and when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll. When it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in dens in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, we pray that you would open every ear. Lord, op open every eye. Lord, let us hear the truths of your word this morning. Lord, let us rightly divide your word. All these things we would pray in Jesus' name. So again, we come right out of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Again, 1.5 billion, as it stands today, 1.5 billion dead. Dead. Now, at this point, we're not talking about from this point forward. We're talking about right now 1.5 billion people dead. So we look here at the uh, verse 9 here when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to focus there on the two reasons why these people were martyred under the altar there. That were under the altar. What are the two reasons? For the word of God and for the testimony which they had. That's why they were killed. 
So that tells us what? In this great tribulation, there is going to be believers there. There's going to be people that are going to, going to what? They're going to say, hey, don't be deceived. This is the Antichrist telling you guys that there's going to be peace on earth. There's going to be bold people, just as there are today, in pulpits all across the United States, in every denomination, preaching and teaching the Word of God. There's going to be people there, Christians. But guess what will happen? They'll be dragged out of the synagogues and they'll be killed. Okay? They will kill the people preaching. What are they? Why would they do that? Well, you've got to ask yourself, what does the Antichrist have to lose? Uh, the only thing the Antichrist wants you to do is believe in him, not God. Okay, that's, that's his whole job, to make you believe in Satan, not to make you believe in the one true God. So their testimony, the testimony which you have, and, and the word of God. Uh, we know that there is only one God, and we're to worship only him. Antichrist is going to say, no, you're going to worship me. There's going to be vast numbers of people that follow him. You're not going to see them martyred and killed. You're going to see the saints killed and martyred at that time. And they're going to be killed again for the word of God. Don't forget it. And the testimony they had, they held fast to their faith. They did not take the mark of a beast. They held to their faith. They held to Jesus. They held on to Jesus through it all. But have no doubt about it, they're, they're in the tribulation here. So this fifth seal here, you know, when it when it says here in verse 10, how long, O Lord? You know, that's kind of like when you first glance at it, you think, are they upset with God? It kind of, kind of looks that way, like they're saying, well, how much longer are you going to put up? That's not, that's not the meaning. Uh, what they're longing for, they've already paid with their lives. What they're longing for is righteousness and and peace to be on the earth. Some of those people there that they're talking about, how long, how much how long? Where is that here? Hold on a minute. How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood? So some of the people there at that time were still alive that had martyred these people. But uh, it's not a it's not a a point of where God has God's done something to displease them. That's not the point at all here. But they're wanting to know when, when Jesus is going to go and deal with all the unjust people. Y'all remember, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Okay, that's a promise. The I will repay, and you're seeing it before your eyes here in Revelation. God is going to repay the sinful man, the unbelieving man, the one that says that uh, Jesus was just a great prophet. That guy. God is going to repay those people that do nothing but evil day and night. Don't think they're going to win. Uh, the worst thought in the world, think about this. And I know y'all have friends that aren't believers, but the worst thing in the world is to think about them with, with our God. Think about it. What he's going to do to them, being righteous as he is, he's as much just as he is loved. Being as just as he is, what is he going to do to our lost friends and family? What is he going to do? He's a righteous God, and he's going to live, and he lives for eternity. How much time does he have to deal with that person that has been evil? And that has said, no, I'll stand on my own. I don't need Jesus. How, how long do you think he has to deal with that person? The torment is going to be unbelievable. You and I can't even fathom what it's going to be. So what's God's response uh, to the question here? White robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little while. Look, white robes, they, they signify what? Purity in God's sight. They've earned their robes. They've died for the word of God, okay? 
uh, he's given them a, a, a spoken word. He's responded to them. Think about it. That prayer that they prayed, how long, oh God, was responded to when? In some distant future time? No, immediately. Um, the relationship between you and God is restored uh, when you become a child of, child of God. When you accept Christ as your personal Savior, the barrier is down. When you talk to God, don't think he doesn't hear you. He doesn't answer in my time or your time. That's up to him. And he's not answering in their time here. He's saying yet another season, right? So he's answering in his time. It's got to be his will, not ours. You know, I'm a flawed guy. You know, I might, uh, I might do something that's out of character. God is not that way. Uh, he's going to do exactly right every everything in his time, not our time. And we've got to get that right. Uh, you know, we want it done today. And, you know, I know when people wrong you, Jesus said you should pray for them. And realize what God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. It's not, it's not a, uh, a slack promise. It's a, it's a fact. So don't worry about the guy that does you wrong. Trust in the one that can make it right. Amen. And again, these brilliant right robes were they were a reward of grace, symbolizing God's gift of eternal righteousness. I mean, you know, they were just beautiful robes put on these people. And in John's vision here, um, and they and they symbolize what what it'll be like to to live day and night in the glory of God. He, he says, "What? What does he say here? Just read it directly out of the Word of God here." That they should rest yet for a little season. What's he saying? It's going to dry your tears. Vengeance is coming on an unjust world. Dry your tears. I'm going to take action against those evil men. Dry your tears. You know, the thing that I've tried to teach y'all since I've been around is God cannot lie. Titus 1 2. He cannot lie. Amen. When he says vengeance is mine, that means it's coming. You don't know when, and I don't know when. You know, uh, he doesn't run on our time. He runs on his time. What does the Bible say? A thousand years ago today. Yeah, yeah, but a day. <laughs> he doesn't run on our timeline. You know, he's the God of the universe. He runs on his timeline, and he's telling the saints here that have been martyred. Now, they've got a good reason to be, you know, to want to know when that's going to be set right. I mean, God doesn't get on you for asking you asking him questions. Uh, you're encouraged to lay every petition at his feet, everything that's on your mind. He wants to be closer to you every day. So these guys weren't in any act of any act of a rebellion at that time. And I want to belabor the point just for a second. It was it was not a they weren't rebuking God or or saying anything evil to God about how long it's taken to to seek vengeance. They were wanting God to, to deal with, uh, you know, the rebellion that's on the earth. You know, uh, it had to make them it had to make them very upset to see what was going on on the earth. Look, 1.5 billion people dead, okay, and then the holy war on the people of God. You know, it had to it had to get on their nerves. I mean, they they want to know when. You know, they're asking when. The phrase a little while longer indicates that uh, that the time will not be delayed. But but he has something else that he wants to accomplish here, and we're going to see this next. Uh, a little season, okay, verse 11, a little season, yet for a little season, until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. God has more saints that he's got to get home in his will, not ours. We've got to be patient and have confidence in his will. It can't be your will or mine. You know, I'd probably get sick of pouring vengeance out on a person sooner or later, wouldn't I? God won't. No. Perfect vengeance. God is perfection. Look, deal with it. God is going to deal with them and it'll be eternally, uh, an eternal vengeance, not not just one or two days. There won't be no early parole out of hell, folks. 
Don't think that way. It'll be forever and ever. Amen. Oh, true. Right. Forever and ever. Hell. Forever and ever. You and I get tired and we want to let a guy out after a couple hundred thousand years, right? Not God. Then. Fellow servants uh, and brethren, there are two classes of people. The first group uh, was alive and willing to die like the martyrs, the fellow servants, right? And then the brethren. They are the ones that would be killed. I know that uh, it's probably not the answer that they wanted to hear, but I promise you they were satisfied with it. Uh, or they will be satisfied with it. We better get our timeline right. They will be satisfied with it. I'll be held when he opened the sixth seal. All right. <clears throat> I'll be held when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as the fig tree cast her untimely figs, and when she is shaken out of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Would you say that was a God-orchestrated event? You know, we've all seen these movies about an asteroid hitting Earth, haven't we? We've, we, we've seen those, these doomsday scenarios. I promise you, that's not the way that the world is going to end. We have it right here in Scripture. Uh, God's going to end this world. Uh, it's not going to be by a man's hand. I don't care what you think or believe. Uh, right here in Scripture, it tells us uh, the beginning of that end. And I beheld, he had opened the sixth seal and, and a great earthquake. The Bible's going to tell us here in a little while that man has never seen an earthquake like it. That kind of an earthquake. It wasn't a little shake and a little tremble. <clears throat> so there were six things that happened here. First, the great earthquake. Uh, again, there's been many. Yet the event uh, that John saw in the seal was far more powerful and devastating than any earthquake to ever hit the earth. Uh, this, this earthquake is going to shake the earth to the very foundation. The Greek word uh, translated here is, as earthquake literally means to shake. For me to shake the earth is just not ever going to happen. <laughs> but when God Almighty shakes this earth, you will not deny it. Amen. God. When he grabs the ends of this earth and shakes it, you will know he is God. Have no doubt about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a God-ordained event. You will not be able to deny who is shaking this earth. But the language here denotes a little bit more than just shaking the earth. The heavens will also shake. The, uh, we need to get the whole idea of what's going to happen. You won't deny it at all. And again, it shakes the heavens as well. Uh, the second thing that goes on in this, in this seal is what? On the hills of the earth cake comes a second disaster. The sun has became black as staff, sackcloth made of hair. Sackcloth was a rough garment, usually made out of black hair of a, of a goat. And it was used in mourning in that day. That's how black the sun will be. Give you a little scripture to support us here. <coughs> Look back at Joel 231. The sun shall be turned. <coughs> the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. That was a prophet, Joel, way back in the Old Testament. Joel prophesying about the great and terrible day of the Lord. <coughs> wow. third disaster is closely connected with the darkening of the sun uh, as the whole moon will become bloody. Wow. The 
y'all are all quiet out here today. So the the ash and the smoke will eclipse uh, will eclipse the moon and and it'll attempt to pierce the darkened sky, but it'll be at some low. And then number four, out of the darkened sky, the fourth disaster. John records that the stars of the sky fell to earth. Well, we know on over in Revelation, there's still stars. But what are we talking about here? Well, the uh, word there, star, uh, stars, uh, could also be interpreted as a meteorite shower or uh, things hitting the earth, okay? So we know in 812, the stars are still in place. So not all the stars fell. Not only that, if a star hit the earth, it would incinerate it immediately. So more than likely, uh, what John has seen here is a, a very serious meteor shower hitting the earth at that time, causing great, huge damage. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not making it any less than anything else uh, that has happened here and can only be attributed to God himself. Amen. The fifth disaster uh, is the atmosphere. The sky appears to split apart like a scroll. Can you imagine that? I can't even imagine. Uh, what was a scroll was rolled together in the Old Testament. That's right. Well, this thing is just going to flip apart. Can you imagine that? How could you deny God at that point? And then uh, John describes the sixth devastating uh, natural phenomenon, noting that every mountain and island were moved out of their place. The whole earth was unstable, and it moved and shifted. Now, can you think about this? Hawaii is moving around, okay? The mountains are falling down around people and moving. Can you imagine what is going on? You know, we think, and I've heard people say, oh, we're in we're in the tribulation time today. They're wrong. Uh, from what I read here, this is absolutely this is absolutely far worse. We can't even multiply how worse this is. Uh, the mountains are crumbling down around people, and they're moving on the whole crust of the earth has become unstable. Can you imagine this time? This is the sixth thing that happened in this seal. Can you imagine anyone attributing them? this to anything less than God? Can you imagine this? Verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond, bond man, every free man in their, hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains, the dens of the mountains, from rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So man and all his infinite wisdom and technological advances hide where? In caves and caverns, like the caveman did. Amen. It's amazing, isn't it? Think about what's going on here. They're fleeing from the very face of God, just like they, just like Adam and Eve did after after the fall. They hid their face from God. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. But more than that, all these people, the rich, what we say, the rich, kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the bonds and the free. None of these are Christians, by the way. Unrepentant men. What do they do? Most of they have a prayer meeting. Who do they pray to? Well, I'm going to tell you. They said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide. So we have a prayer meeting, but it's not to call ourselves to repentance from the things that we have been doing, from the evil that we do every day. It's not for that. It's to ask the mountains and the rocks to fall on us and keep us from them. Keep us from God. Are you amazed at this time in history is to come that men still will not repent they still will not say God I'm wrong I've committed sins against you I've sinned 
and I want to be forgiven. They still will not do that. You know, one of the revelations says that a man's going to pray for death, and it will not go. Can you imagine that time? I know I've been depressing y'all for weeks, but, uh, you know, it, it's upon you to know the Word of God. It's upon me to know the Word of God, and we need to know here that God means business. Uh, right here, he is pronouncing judgment on man. Okay, and if you've got children and, and uh, family going forward into the future, and we might be talking about some of your family, probably will. I don't know anything that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Uh, for this time to pass, to come to pass. I don't know when it'll start. It may start this very hour. Uh, but I want you to think about who's orchestrating this. And it's none other than God. Man, nobody other than God. And they're praying to the rocks. Seriously? The rocks in the earth cover this. And all they'd have to do is call out on the Lamb of God. Jesus. Uh, to, to forgive their sins and, and to bring them into the right relationship with God. That's all they got to do. But they will not. Uh, you talk about the sinfulness of a man. Here it is. It's on display for you. They will not even admit uh, that God can save their soul at that time. They hid their face from him. Crawl around in the rocks. Have a prayer meeting and tell everybody, pray to the rocks that they might save you. Wow. Well, Kind of sweet, isn't it? And, and they know here, in the end of 16, they know here, him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of who? The Lamb. You know, he's not coming back to be tied to a whipping post, folks. He's coming back to reign. Uh, and he will reign. You can have no doubt about it. They're terrified of him right here at this time. Jesus is there. Uh, look, they're from the wrath of the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ they're talking about, our Savior. And then the author here, John, asks a question. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? You know, this question is relevant today as it was when it was written. Who shall be able to stand? Who? Only the people, only the people that had been saved by Jesus Christ, by <coughs> his blood, and the shedding of his blood on the cross are going to be able to come through this time. The only people who shall be able to stand, that's the people. The people that they've martyred by the thousands up to today. That's the people that could have stood. These folks here that we're talking about, the mountains might fall on them, but I guarantee you, uh, Vengeance is still coming. They might die. They might commit suicide. But you still have the debt to pay to a righteous God right. for what you've done. Death does not get you out of it. I don't care if the mountains fall on them. They've still got to pay the debt. Jesus, uh, Jesus said it himself. You know, we should pray for our enemies. And we should. Because the, the payment is coming from a righteous God. They won't be able to stand it. Then they'll have to do it anyway. They'll have to take it for eternity. Uh, and you know, and it troubles me, and I know I'm running low on time this morning, it troubles me to think of a person that I care about or even know, or even don't know, to be in the hands of a righteous God. Think about it. You know he's never going to have mercy on you. Because of the, the promise that he had to make. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So if you got loved ones, brothers and sisters, please, I'm begging you today. They don't need to go through this time of tribulation. It's going to be awful by anybody's measurement. Uh, you will have no doubt uh, who's doing it, but it's going to be awful by anybody's measurement. So now is the appointed time. Uh, he's standing at the door and knocking at your heart this morning. Jesus is right there. All you have to do is agree with him that you're a sinner. Amen. And I don't know anyone that isn't. 
I go to church with people every Sunday. I don't know anybody that's not a sinner. Right. Some of them are just saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I don't know any non-sinful people. So, uh, But I'm telling you this morning, please, reach out to these folks that don't know God. Reach out to them. Listen, if they shut you down, so what? Uh, keep doing it. Keep talking to them every day. What is going to happen is nothing short of a catastrophe uh, that none of us can measure. No one can measure what's going to go on here when God tears the world apart. And it's literally what's happening. He's going to tear it all to pieces. You think of what it takes to move a mountain. He's going to do it. <laughs> so use this time. Uh, use this week. Take the time to go talk to your loved ones about Jesus. He's the one that can make this problem uh, go away for them. Uh, they don't have to go through this. They don't have to pray, a rock, pray for rocks to fall on them. They don't have to do it. Uh, they can pray to the one that can save their soul. They can have that robe of white and be in that golden city uh, for after a thousand years we'll be shining as the sun. So the psalm says. So this morning, please, Talk to one person. I'm begging you. Y'all on the internet, talk to your friends and your family. Uh, this is going to be terrible. Terrible times for people. Uh, and you say, Brother Mark, it ain't going to be that bad. Well, you're wrong. 1.5 billion people. And then the earth is absolutely coming apart at the seams. The sun can't even shine on your face. Yeah, It's going to be a bad, bad time. Amen. So go talk to those people this week in closing. You don't want your family in the hands of a righteous God if they deny Christ. You don't. That's right. I'm begging you. Go talk to them this week. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the one that loved them enough to come here and die on the cross and pay for their sins. You know, it doesn't cost anybody anything to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. It doesn't cost you anything. What's holding you back today? Do you not believe the Bible? I'm telling you, uh, he can't lie. God cannot lie. It's the only thing he cannot do. He can't lie. It's going to come to pass. Y'all stand with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Lord, we praise you for who you are. And Lord, it might be to think about people in your hands. You know, you've made us a promise. You said, vengeance is yours, and you would repay Lord, we just praise you for who you are. Lord, we praise you and thank you for Jesus. Lord, we thank you that he did die for us on the cross. And Lord, we thank you that this death's already been paid. We don't owe it anymore. He's taken it upon himself. Lord, we just ask that uh, anyone in the sound of our voice that don't know you, you as their personal Savior, Lord, we just pray today that your heart, that you would convict their heart. And Lord, today you would gloriously save their soul. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.